Larry, let's just start with um, the latest comments here from Donald Trump, because we had, have heard that OPEC and its allies are, are sort of holding uh, or standing pat, I guess, on those production levels. That is despite the renewed pressure that we have seen from Donald Trump. What is your reaction and your thought on how the oil price is moving right now, despite all of that pressure? Yeah, well, I think it's a uh, it's a good idea, I suppose, to try to talk prices down um, over Twitter, over press, et cetera. But it's simply just not going to work. Um, I think the, the market is grasping for that spare capacity. And over the weekend, as we know, um, OPEC wasn't uh, willing to uh, release that spare capacity. So, uh, you know, give the, the president an honorable mention to try to walk prices down. But they did finish a little bit higher today. And again, I think it's just a short term, uh, maybe an intermediate term issue uh, until we get that spare capacity. But, you know, OPEC has mentioned they think the market is balanced. And until they see uh, news of otherwise, I think they're going to keep production levels the way they are. And so do you think that we are in for higher oil prices from here? We mentioned in the story in the lead in that a lot of analysts are calling for $100 a barrel oil. What are your thoughts on the prospect of that? <laughs> Yeah, I still don't think we're going to see $100 uh, per barrel for oil. Um, been wrong, been wrong about oil most of the year, actually. But um, I think this is a short term situation. A couple of things are playing um, on the demand side that people aren't talking about. And that is uh, oil is still well over $100 a barrel in, the, in a lot of the emerging markets. Um, is demand going to continue at the same pace it has over the past 18 months? It's, it's, it's tailing off a little bit. It's still running hot. So can that continue? And um, also, I think that, you know, the cure for higher prices is clearly higher prices. So I think it's just going to be automatic for the you know, oil prices to level off at some point. And the forward curves on uh, the futures prices aren't going that much higher than they have been in the past couple of days. Larry, I was speaking earlier with Ira Epstein about the oil price and some of these commodity moves more broadly, even across base metals. And he was sort of saying maybe that's a sign that we could see inflation starting to pick up and might start feeding through to the U.S. economy. Up until this point, the U.S. Federal Reserve, I just want to sort of tie it in here with the central bank. Um, it's been fairly easy for the U.S. Federal Reserve to raise interest rates because the economy has been doing well. Inflation hasn't been picking up all that much. But against the backdrop of rising commodities and rising inflation, um, you'd have to think that the Federal Reserve is pretty aware of that situation taking place. Yeah, I, they're definitely aware of it. Um, inflation isn't running anywhere close to where it, it, it should be, I suppose, to get up the, uh, you know, the 10 year Treasury to a neutral rate or the, I'm sorry, the Fed funds rate to a neutral rate. Um, oil at these levels uh, not not catastrophic. Will it feed into inflation? Yeah, it will, but it won't be as big as uh, most people think. Uh, I think oil would have to be, you know, 10 to 20 dollars a barrel higher than this point and remain there for three or four months to see like a real impact on the inflation. And as you know, know full well that um, the rest of the commodity sector has, you know, bounced back a little bit, but it's still far from being in what I would call an inflationary environment. Um, speaking of the Fed, of course, we're expecting that interest rate decision tomorrow. They've kicked off their, their two day policy meeting. I don't think there's um, any question about whether they'll raise, but always a big focus on the statement and the dot plots and that commentary from Jay Powell. Is there anything um, you know expected? What will you be watching in particular out of that Fed decision? Yeah, um, you're right. It's it's you know 100 percent that it's going to be a rate hike tomorrow, at least according to the Fed futures. Um, but um, it'd be interesting to see what the committee's stance is on monetary policy. I mean, they're talking about six rate hikes and the Fed futures are, you know, pricing in maybe three, maybe four, uh, a big difference. Um, also, what's the rate projection for 2019? Um, it's still, uh, the Fed still seems to be higher than the market is. And lastly, um, what's the long term projections? We're going to start seeing 2021 um, economic predictions from many of the Fed members. So I think all that combines will be very interesting in what it does, maybe not to the absolute level of uh, interest rates, but to the yield curves themselves. Because keep in mind, like the two year, 30 year uh, yield curve is about 40 basis points. And if the Fed is going to continue with the rate hikes they say, 
we're talking about a 100 point uh, basis difference in what the market's implying. And that's going to be uh, disastrous for the yield curve. All right, excellent. We'll wrap it up there on that note, Larry. Pleasure as always. Thank you. We'll look forward to talking again next week.